Today we're going to be talking about gift sets, bundled products, presentation packaging, and bulk or volume discounts. What's the difference between each and how you should approach pricing? Hello everyone, my name is Wade Thomas. I'm the owner of Black Tie Bar and Candle Company and this YouTube channel. If you are new here, I would encourage you to subscribe, hit the bell notification so you are alerted on future videos. And for everyone else, welcome back. As always, I appreciate you being here. Let's dive right into today's topic. A very common question that I see all the time and I'm asked all the time is how and when you should bundle your candles or melts or whatever into gift sets or just bundled sets. And should your pricing be lower, higher, or the same as if you were to sell them all individually? Well, the short answer is it depends. And we're going to get into the details and some examples of why it depends, when it depends, and what you should consider when pricing your sets or bundles. It's an excellent question. It's particularly important around the holidays because we're selling so many more gift sets, so many more bundled packages, or and, and so many more products in general, which begs the question, should you be pricing lower or higher if you're selling more products to the same customers? Or should you be selling lower or higher or the same if you're selling the same products to customers just in a different way? Well, let's discuss a few important factors to consider before we discuss with details and specific examples. The most important factor to consider really is what is the purpose of your bundled set or your gift set? What is the purpose of what you're doing with your product? And more importantly, is it adding value to what you would normally sell otherwise? Or are you simply just trying to get creative with other ways to move products faster? In other words, are you trying to create faster inventory turnover? And to clarify, we're always trying to create faster inventory turnover. There's a difference between you running a sale um, to try to move some product out the door. Maybe it's end of season. Uh, maybe you're discontinuing a product, things like that. There's a there's a difference between trying to sell products quickly at a discounted rate versus selling something as a gift set, a bundled set, or at a volume discount. So again, to recap, the first question you have to ask yourself before you price your bundle or gift set is, what is the purpose of the set and is it adding value? And so we're going to talk about some differences between gift sets bundled sets, and volume and bulk discounts. Well, let's work our way backwards first, and let's start with bulk discounts or volume promotions. So for example, every year I run a March Madness sale. Now, if you're not familiar with March Madness, I'm sure most of you are, but it's uh, commonly thought of as one of the most exciting sports events every year, uh, with the exception of this last March that it was canceled due to COVID. But either way, March Madness is a uh, really fun event and it is held in the spring. Now, the reason that I do a March Madness event, and I actually call mine the March Melt Madness event, is because spring is one of our slower times for candles anyways, spring and then going into summer. Um, it's a slower time for candles and melts as compared to fall and winter, for example. So it's a great opportunity to try to do something to uh, promote additional sales. And so what I do is I put together a list of available options for scents, and then I do kind of a bundled promotion where if they, uh, first of all, I discounted a little bit just for the sale, for the promotion itself. And then I also will bundle them. And if they buy 10, they get at even a better rate. This is a bundled promotion for a specific time of year for a specific time of, uh, for a specific reason. So in this case, I'm not adding value with this promotion. I am simply trying to increase my turnover rate and I'm trying to increase sales where otherwise it might be a little bit lower. So the product itself, what I'm doing with this promotion and this bundle isn't adding value per se, I'm just trying to sell more product. So in this case, I would not increase the price, I'm actually lowering the price when I bundle these items together. Let's look at another example of uh, kind of a volume discount. Now this is on a very small scale um, and it's this is a, um, a promotion I've run in, in, in the past several times and it's just, a normal $4 per wax melt, three for 11, six for 20. Again, this is common with wax melts in general. Um, you're just trying to offer a little bit incentive for buying more. So again, you're not gonna add incentive to buy more if you raise the price or keep the price the same. Your goal here is to simply increase your price or lower your price a little bit to try to encourage them buying a little bit more. And you're hoping that that leads to more profit. So again, this is another example of just volume or bulk discounting. But the classic example that everyone really kind of thinks about when it comes to this type of format is wholesale accounts. For a wholesale account, you're selling a product or several products to a wholesale account customer 
um, for them to go ahead and then sell it at retail. And when you do that, you're selling it to them at a discounted rate across the board, but they have to buy a lot for that to happen, right? So that is a classic example of a bulk or, or volume discount. So I know everyone's fairly, very familiar with these, so I didn't want to spend much time on these. I just wanted to explain that this is one scenario where you're bundling or discounting items but not because you're adding value through packaging or through a bundle or through a gift set. Rather, it's to incentivize additional sales that otherwise might not be there. So all that being said, what about bundled packaging, gift sets, bundled retail sets like you see in the stores around the holidays? What do you do in those situations? Now let's talk about gift sets. Well, gift sets essentially are products that you maybe otherwise sell all year long, or you sell around particular seasons for, or particular events. But the key, the key to a gift set is that it's presented in a way that's unique. It's presented in a way that you do not normally sell your product. So for example, if you sell candles, you might have them in a gift wrap or a gift packaging. Same thing with melts. But let's take a classic example of something that is sold every year on the holidays in a gift set format. And that is a box of chocolates. So here we look at just a Valentine heart-shaped box of chocolates. Very common around Valentine's Day, right? You can buy chocolates all year long. You can buy them individually, you can buy them in bags. You can buy this anytime, almost anywhere, and what you're getting in a gift box of chocolates is not any different than you could get otherwise. But the purpose of a heart-shaped gift box of chocolates is to be seasonal. It's to pull at the heartstrings a little bit. It's to be presented as a gift. It's to show that it means a little bit more. It's it's all about presentation and packaging, right? This heart-shaped box of chocolates probably costs three or four times the amount that you could buy these chocolates individually just from a bag. But it's all in the presentation, it's all in the gift wrap, the gift packaging, and it's for a specific purpose. So in this case, even though you're adding, even though you're selling the same product, or usually less of the product in this case, you're adding value in the presentation. You're adding value because of the extra touch that you added with the gift itself. You can hand someone a handful of chocolates or you can hand it to them in a heart-shaped box. It's what you're telling someone when you hand them a gift in this fashion. It's the same thing when we're opening presents under the tree. You could give a young girl a jewelry box, a new set of earrings, a necklace. You could give them a tablet. When you give it to them in a box wrapped and under a tree, it adds some suspense, it adds some mystery, it adds that additional appeal and intrigue to the gift. Rather than just handing it over, you're building a little bit of suspense and that adds to the value of the gift itself. You went through a little extra work to prepare the item for them in this way and that adds a little bit of a mo more emotional attachment to the gift and it definitely adds more excitement to the gift. And that is another reason why we wrap gifts, right? You can always go hand someone the exact same thing and, uh, and you're not adding anything physically different to the product, right? But it's all about the experience. I guess what I'm saying overall is gift packaging, gift wrapping adds to the experience and adding to the experience is adding additional value. So you can take the same products and walk up and hand it to them, or you can go through the extra time and the extra effort and the extra presentation to give it some nice little frillies and nice little wrapping paper and a bow and some string and a card and whatever else you could think of, that type of gift set and gift packaging adds some value to your customer. You may already see where I'm going with this, and that is almost always gift sets should be at a higher price than what you would sell the product always. You're going to see this across all industries. A very classic example of an industry that does this every single year is the perfume industry. Fragrances, bath and body sell products all year long, but around the holidays, they bundle these products into little gift sets, little gift baskets, things like that, and they sell like hotcakes. And it's because of the presentation, it's because of the time of the year, and people are expecting something a little bit different, a little bit better in terms of presentation, preparation for the product. Packaging, thoughtfulness, all of that matters to customers, especially around times of year where they're giving them as gifts. And so don't be worried about increasing your prices a little bit when it comes to gift sets customers are almost always expecting that. Now they don't have to buy them as gift sets. Remember that, they don't have to. If you sell the product otherwise, they can always buy the product from you in the traditional way, and that's totally fine. But most are going to appreciate the gift, the gift sets, especially around the holidays, birthdays, and other celebratory events. Now there's a fine line between 
bundled sets and gift sets. Now for the most part, bundled sets just means you're bundling different items together to be sold as a set together rather than individually. Now most of the time, that is not necessarily adding value, uh, but it is making things a little more convenient. You're kind of adding a unique twist and a way to buy for a customer to buy something from you. So most of the time, bundled sets are gonna be around the same amount, but they can. it depends on the reason that you're bundling the set. Again, if, if you're bundling the set just to try to sell, move some inventory that might not be otherwise moving on its own. So for example, if you were to package, if you wanted to sell a bundle of four of your candles and you took two of your best selling candles, one of your medium selling candles, and then one of your kind of lower selling candles and bundled them together, what you're essentially doing is getting a creative way to move products that might sit there by themselves, but you've attached them to products that move a little bit faster with more appeal. And in that case, you might lower your bundle price just a tad because you're trying to compensate for the fact that you're working on pushing some additional inventory out the door. You're trying to move items a little bit faster and you're getting creative with the way you do it. So that might be one scenario where you lower your pricing just a tad. It's almost like a discounted bundled set. But most of the time, people are bundling for presentation purposes. Sometimes they're used for gifts. Other times they're just used for a better presentation. A very common example of this is Bath & Body Products. Everyone knows that you can go down the aisle at your favorite store and see shelves and shelves full of Bath & product, Bath and Body Products. Shampoo, conditioners, soaps, lotions, hand creams, foot creams, and the list goes on. But you also will see uh, little sets and little baskets. Those move a lot more around uh, holidays, and again, because they are kind of put together in a way that makes a good set or a good gift. Well, again, in this particular scenario, presentation is everything. You could sell a shampoo, a lotion, a bar of soap, and a towel all individually, but are you adding appeal? Are you adding intrigue? Are you adding a little bit of value by bundling that together, kind of doing some of the work for the customer in terms of what items go well together? That's a way of adding value. By putting them into a basket that they might continue to use at home in their bathroom is a way of adding value. The extra presentation is some added value. And so in this case, a lot of these times, these bundled sets do sell for a little bit more than you would buy these, these items individually. Sometimes they don't. That's for you to decide depending on what you're bundling and the reason, the purpose that you're bundling. Another example would be a wine basket. Now, someone could go buy a bottle of wine, or you can package that bottle of wine into a basket with some chocolates and a, and a wine glass. That is kind of turning that into a bundled set that could also be given as a gift. You're adding value with the presentation. You're adding value with other products. And so this is another good example that bundling different products that customers could buy individually could actually benefit you and earn you some additional profit. Okay, so why the difference? Why should gift sets and bundled products generally be priced higher? Well, if it's adding value, that's easy. More value generally means more higher price. It's all about supply and demand. Customers are going to pay more for a better product. Customers are gonna pay more for more value. But what about when the actual value is the same? Do we increase our price for perceived value even if there's no actual value? The answer is usually yes. And be careful about how you think about that because even though you don't see any physical increase in value and you only see perceived value, perceived value is value. Perspective is everything. Presentation is everything. When a customer perceives an increase in value of a product, then they're expecting a higher price and are okay with that price. Perceived value is value. And why is that? Because presentation is everything. As candle makers, wax melt makers, soap makers, anyone in industry or business for themselves, everyone knows that branding is a form of presentation. Branding is extremely important. It's a form of presentation. And value is attached to your brand. Why as a candle maker do you take product photos for your website or your Facebook page or your Etsy shop? Because simply slapping your, a plain old photo of your candle up there is fine, but you have a lot more value when you take product photography. Good quality photos add perceived value. They increase le your legitimacy, they increase the, the perception of your customers when they're visiting your page. We spend a lot of time on product photography because we know that good photos add value. We spend a lot of time on our branding because we know that branding adds value. Labels. We all spend a lot of time on our labels. We're always worried about our labels because labels add value. Labels, labels are a form of quality presentation. So gift sets and bundles are the same thing. It's another form of presentation, except it's actually even more obvious. 
The key is, is that presentation adds value. And when something adds value, you increase your cost. For example, here's a nice pair of shoes that's thrown in a plain old box. When you buy, when you pay for this, you're paying what you believe the shoes are worth. Then again, you throw them in a gift box with a nice little bow, a personalized tag, and suddenly you feel compelled to spend maybe a little bit more than you otherwise would. It's the personal touch, the gift wrapping, the presentation versus just a pair of shoes in a box. Another really good example of this is flowers. Now, any of you guys out there, and, and, and most, most of you ladies could probably speak to this, but you're gonna be happy if someone hands you some flowers most of the time. Now, I, I know, not everyone loves flowers. In fact, some people could get flowers and could care less. But generally speaking, if someone were to hand you flowers, that would make you feel good. You would be happy that they handed you flowers. You might appreciate them, but you won't appreciate them near as much if they gave you a bouquet of flowers and they gave it to you in a way that looked a little bit more thoughtful. There's something nice about an elegant, intentional display of a nice bouquet of flowers. And again, we all do this in our normal candle making businesses and hobbies, right? We don't just throw up a random photo of a candle. We at least give it some type of background, some type of warmth, or maybe we add a flower or a plant in the background, or maybe we add a flower and a plant in the background and a book. Sometimes we show even more of a lifestyle where someone's reading the book behind the candles. We're always thinking of unique ways to connect with our customers. Or many of us go the other direction. Some of us go with more clean, modern, crisp looking photos, maybe with a seasonal twist. Here's an example of that. Or here's a photo from my website that many of you have seen before where I'm just simply going for a nice, clean photo of one of my candles in a very dramatic fashion where the black kind of just fades into the background and the candle just kind of pops. So I want the focus to be entirely on that in this particular situation. So it's very different than a lifestyle photo. But the main point is that we all care about our product photography because we know that product photography, good quality, high quality photos means everything. The presentation adds value. And that is the underlying theme of today's video. So to circle back and kind of recap and summarize, the one question you have to ask yourself when you are putting together your gift sets for the holidays or bundled sets for a birthday or Valentine's Day or for any other reason, if your gift set or bundle is adding value, whether that is actual value because of the product, actual value because of the packaging, or perceived value because of the presentation, those are all reasons to increase your price. Adding value typically means increasing your price. On the contrary, if you're simply bundling items to help them move a little bit faster, not adding any really additional value other than just piecing different items together, in that case, that is an example where maybe you sell it for the same amount. Or if you're trying to move some other product that never moves by itself and you want to tie it to another product that does move, that might be a scenario to lower the cost just a little bit. So I hope this video helped everyone out just a little bit and under, to give a little bit more insight of when you're bundling items in gift sets or otherwise, whether or not you should increase your price and how to do so. Now, there really isn't a formula on how much to increase your price. You kind of have to know your own market. It depends on the, what the price of your products are individually. There's a lot that goes into the actual specific pricing, but as a theory in general, I hope that this video really helped all of you out. I really appreciate everyone for being here and uh, we'll see you next time. Thank you.